All right. Welcome to Own the Real. I'm your host, Pastor Adam McCain, and we are coming to you live from the great campus of Christ for the Nations Institute, Dallas, Texas. And joining me today is probably some of my favorite people on the planet. Uh, he mentioned in a meeting today that uh, that he had a man crush on me. That is not true. I have such a Big man crush man on crush. this guy yeah. right here. And his, I can't say that about your wife. That would be wrong. But I, I just <laughs> so love you guys. And uh, uh, joining me today for this amazing podcast is Michael and Larissa Miller of the Upper Room Movement really is what we're talking about. So much more than just local church. So that just intro touching. song got me moving. Man, could you feel it? Come there on. was a little funk in that. That's that's <laughs> that, that has a little bit of my New Orleans background feel, jazz, oh. you know, piece going on there. Guys, thank you for joining us today. And just just to open up, why don't you just kind of, you know, if there's someone on the planet that doesn't know who you are, I apologize because they sure should. <laughs> but maybe just kind of give a, just kind of, Brief history, you guys. Now, you guys have been married, I think you said, uh, um, 17 years, 12 years. What was it? It was somewhere in that. (laughs) 13 will be 14 soon. Mm -hmm. And four children. Four children. Four kids. Yeah, phenomenal. Ten, nine girls, four or five boys. Talking about making the most of every moment on this planet. (laughs) You guys are building a large family, Mm. touching nations. And, Mm. man, you just bless me so much. And I just... You know, one of my favorite pieces, uh, if you haven't seen, by the way, an Upper Room YouTube video, go watch. You won't be able to get up off the floor. You're like, why am I doing church anymore? Mm. Just the presence of the Lord, even off every little video. And you you had me laughing because, you know, we're like, well, yeah, we just threw a camera up back in the day. And just we and those things touch people because you mm. were fighting for the mm. presence. And a GoPro camera yeah. up in the corner. One of our former CFNI students who was a barista. That's true. Mm-hmm. I felt like we had a word from the Lord because we did not do media at all. Yeah. I said, hey, bro, I feel like we should just start capturing moments. So we threw a GoPro up in the corner and then had one handheld. And it was like the second moment we released was bonkers. So Yeah. It was, it was it unreal. Way. It just yeah. exploded. It went viral. Yeah. Why don't you uh, why don't you tell us a little bit like how, how Upper Room came to pass and what was that in your heart and where were you at in the moment when God... Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, it's a hard story to tell just because it's, it's precious and uh, hard to relate. But I mean, Michael was in ministry a long time. I mean, your whole adult life. Mm-hmm. Yes. 23 years. Yeah. Sorry, when I was 21. And mm-hmm. we had just taken a year off, got yeah, married. Got married. We're just working, you know, regular jobs. <laughs> um, you were in sales. I was doing terrible. I was sales doing a <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I, I was think terrible. you're a great salesman. That you were selling iPhones like crazy. <laughs> iPhones. <laughs> um, we were. We had enjoyed our first year of marriage, and we were both really hungry for the Lord. And really, sort of, we had taken that year to just be married and work just to. We felt like that's what God wanted us to do, to not be ministry focused that year. And I'd recommend that, by the way. Um, we, but, I, yeah. I was pretty fried after probably 10 years of ministry and was in a, a transition that I didn't handle well. Mm. And we were engaged <laughs> to be married and I called our wedding off. Yep. Yep. We can go deep into I that. Didn't know which, we were wow. Go there. On the real, guys. Right? On the uh, real. You <laughs> said you want the, the good, day the before. bad, the ugly. But the day before. It was the day before I called Are her wedding you off. Are serious? And mm. uh, I, I just, I struggled with anxiety, depression. That had been a part of my story. And we had a really short engagement, mm-hmm. um, buying a house. I was traveling with, uh, you know, Sean Foyt. Yeah, so absolutely. Foyt's a good friend. They had yeah. him and Kate had moved to Dallas, and mm-hmm. we was were, he calling them Burns in those? We days? were we yeah. so second Burns. We burn bought was a house Dallas. like three doors down, yeah. I think, wow. for me. He was just with me on Saturday. I love what oh, God's doing with yeah. with Sean, but good good friend. But you know, you try to shout, travel with Sean any any extent of time, and he just goes. Yeah, man. he's a machine. He is a machine, and he's always been like that, but. That coupled with some of the 
getting engaged, transferring jobs, we're planning a church, and man, I just got fried mm. and hit the rip cord. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I'm bailing. And uh wow. and it was a left you me know, in the left me in the beauty <laughs> came through yeah. those ashes, but it was one of those moments where just everything crumbled. Mm-hmm. And um uh, wow. and so I, I knew though, I said I have Lord, I, ministry, whatever. Um you know, that season, I, all I wanted was Larissa. I just knew I needed to get my soul right and mm. healed. And So you would and say from it was more of like, I need to get something right before I go into this. Mm-hmm. Right. Less of like, sure. I don't, I'm scared of you or this commitment. Right. That had nothing. To, yeah. No, he was scared of the commitment. I was, I was frightened <laughs> but of the he, commitment. But he said to me, I love you. I want to marry you. I just can't marry you like this. Mm-hmm. But I can't stand before okay, God. I can't go any further. What did your folks say? I get it. You were oh, further along sure in your adulthood. To listen to this. No, I, mean, I was a, I was twenty four. So, yeah, so but you weren't eighteen. You know, so yeah, they didn't feel the need to protect yeah. you so much. I guess. Oh, they were. Uh, they were fired up. Were they? <laughs> well, it's miraculous. <laughs> my mother in law is still now. They're like my it, best friends. She now, loves you. They adore oh, each other. Weird. Wow. But it, it took a little time. It's been a journey. What? Oh yeah, they were livid. But God totally redeemed that. Yeah, that mm-hmm. season. We got married eight months later. We got healed up. I got healed mm-hmm. up. She got healed up, and then we took a year off. Mm-hmm. And that was it. Was literally the the best year. We've had amazing years ever since. But that first year was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you didn't bring the stress of that ministry and all those pressures to the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had kind of seen each other maybe at our worst. Yeah, we chose sure. each other anyway. Yeah, I pick you. Which is something that a lot of people have to do I, to into honestly, marriage. She had no reason to. I, I have no idea other than the Lord. She chose me, but I, if it, only the the people could see you right now, they was, would understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beard, <laughs> um, so sexy. But you, you, <laughs> when that's the foundation of your marriage, when you make it through something like that, it. Mm. it I see God's purpose in it. Yeah. We were going to, yeah. And so that first year in the marketplace, I actually, Mm -hmm. I was a decent salesman. I made more money, I think, that year than I had the (laughs) previous year. We made and spent. Like eight. (laughs) All that money. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. You can actually make money in the world. Wait, why didn't uh, I say yes to ministry? (laughs) (laughs) And then mm-hmm. towards towards the end of that year, though, really getting an itch, and we had we had a lot of prophetic mm-hmm. promises that really really that season got hijacked, mm-hmm. and the Lord was committed to seeing those purposes. Wow, mm-hmm. that's a great so way to say it. It, it. it it you know we're it really it I bring so much it brings me so much peace to know that what God's built the upper room what we're leading yeah it really was His idea yeah. and. Knowing where we, what we came out of, and my friend Rabbi Jason Sobel, he always says, "Don't trust a leader that doesn't have a limp." Right. And man, I I'm like Jacob. We like know that, our limp. Yeah. That mm. that really broke us down, but um, it it began this beautiful journey of God inviting us to start a prayer room in Oaklawn mm-hmm. uh, as a business owner. Um, and explain Oaklawn for those who didn't know oh, yeah. that area homosexual district of downtown Dallas, mm-hmm. post-Christian. I call it a church planting graveyard. So yeah. t- tons of churches, mm-hmm. guys with more resources, gifting mm-hmm. teams come to that area, but you know, bounce to the burbs yeah. or go somewhere else. Oh, just cause sure. it was really hard. It's, it's, I think sexy from afar, like, Oh man, let's go into this dark Mission area of our field. city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But man, it, the and, and our art district as well. Right. Isn't art that kind district, of, yeah. yeah. It, it's the uptown. Mm-hmm swanky restaurants and so uh, a veterinarian had a small space that he called the upper room and um, on a literal second floor a literal yeah. second floor overlooked downtown and um were you thinking local church at the time or are you no. thinking just a prayer initiative we weren't really thinking anything other than we had a prophetic word so we i called sort our of wedding in a storyline yeah i called our wedding off on september 28th mm. and on September 12th of that same month, I sent an email out to Sean and the guys we were running with out of Mark 14. Believe it or not, it was about a fully furnished upper room in the city. Really? 
So and you I, had this I, word I, from the I Lord. I called it, uh-huh. the title of the email was Blueprints. Blueprints for a new kind of community. New kind of community. Is what wow. the subject line says. And I felt it's the, the email <laughs> is that there's a, a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him. He'll introduce you to the owner. The owner will show you a large, fully mm-hmm. furnished upper room. When you find that, me and my disciples will meet you there. And so, so did you send that out like this is for somebody else or hey guys, no, we were for me. Do you bear witness? We with were it? fasting uh-huh. and praying. Um, with meanwhile, a group of young adults. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, you know, my soul's fried. Yeah. I'm I'm yeah. about to completely hit the ripcord and bounce yeah. two weeks after I send this email oh out. But the Lord at, at Starbucks at yeah. Forest in Preston here in Dallas, he he spoke to me that morning. And yeah. and so, you know, we went through all that a year and some change later. This business owner whom I met through mm-hmm. a, a guy that has a small ministry in the city, which was the pitcher of water. He introduces me to this business owner. This business owner shows us a room that he calls the upper room. Now, at the time, I wasn't like still holding up that word. Like, no, Lord, no, you told me about had, an upper room. Like, no. where's this word? But I, I, I think when he mentioned upper room, all of a sudden it was Click. like, uh-huh. You, yes. I, w- wait a second. And I went back to my Gmail, yes, searched yeah. it, and it uh-huh. popped up. And I was like, this is, is that. that. And so out of obedience, the the Passover was like six weeks later. Mm. Like f- this was like February of 2010. And uh, I said, let's let's host a Passover, <laughs> which we'd never done. Google. You know, I like Google <laughs> Gentile, I Googled Gentile Passover. Messianic. It was Passover. the worst Passover in the that history of the long greatest. and brutal. However th- many thousands of years have uh-huh. there been Passovers, this was the worst. <laughs> but we did it. And we your community it. was there with you or just you just as a family? Just like maybe, uh, maybe like 20-something friends. Friends. You know? Yeah, that we just invited. And do they still laugh? Do they take it that it was the worst Passover Probably, celebration yeah. ever? Or is that yeah, just yeah, your just no, yeah. hard, <laughs> being hard on Everyone yourself? Everyone was, we were making them read these passages and... <laughs> We we're in this, we're stuff. over this vet clinic. There's dogs barking underneath us and we're trying to do this prophetic act. That yeah. is phenomenal. <laughs> and we felt like we would pray from Passover to Pentecost, just, just to be faithless word, yeah. pray on Sunday nights. That was offered to us. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't invite a lot of our friends to come down. We didn't feel like we were supposed to bring anyone in the mm-hmm. sense of like, Hey, we're doing something. Mm-hmm. We really felt an assignment from the Lord, like just come, come into this room mm-hmm. and pray regularly Mm -hmm. and and i'm gonna highlight who needs to be here and Mm -hmm. there was a handful of people we did not know and in the next six weeks we would we would end up sovereignly meeting them at our apartment complex at a a coffee shop just people that Uh we may have had a history with that we felt led to share hey Uh we're we're actually praying on sundays don't know if you want to come and a few of those people are now they've been with us for 14 years my goodness yeah um, people who and then, even in that seven week period, people just showed up. Yeah, someone had told them something. There was I mean, a coffee shop across a, the street that a guy ran. A, yeah. That was when Facebook was everything, and we didn't have a Facebook page. We had, we didn't know nothing. Didn't promote it. We really felt like the Lord said, mm. "Just this is a real sacred, hidden thing that mm. I want to birth, and if if you'll let me build this, watch what I do." Mm-hmm. And and she had had a dream actually. Um, in that season of us discerning what the Lord was calling us into before we found this, this supper room thing, she had a real profound dream that, that, that kind of gave us framework for what potentially could come out of it. Um, and it was about, a you want to share that dream about the, just the, the high rise and the, yeah, I did. I, I knew that it, I was in, in the future in this dream and I saw a skyscraper in the in downtown Dallas and it had this massive like mechanical arm that hinged at the very top and it would swing over the 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 city and bless it I don't know how to explain it and I knew wow. there was a lot of You're money doing pretty good <laughs> a lot of money on that top floor and it was a veil over yeah there thing. I knew that God it, yeah that was the day that God was going to unveil that something that we had built and and it was to, meant to bless the city it mm. was something um heavenly and so and there were leaders from around the yeah world. there were yeah there were leaders from all around the world coming to see what we had built um and i as i was i you know how dreams are but as i'm looking at this skyscraper and i'm about to see it unveiled this uh gal that was in community with us was 
scaling the side of it with a bag of money strapped to her. And I nudged Michael in the dream and I said, um, is she pyloric? And I woke up. Now, I don't know what that word is. You probably don't. I, I have no, no idea. Does. So I Google it as you do. And um, pyloric is Greek and it means gate guard. What? Like a gatekeeper. And wow. I knew that there was something God was calling us to that was meant to bless the city that was unlike anything we knew. So I think we felt a real fear from the Lord over the years to be careful to not mimic what we'd seen, right. you know? Yeah. I think that's what's blessed me in our times of con- conversing over the last few hours is <clears throat> how pure you've stayed to what he told you to do mm. and not let the influences that we all come from, which are not bad things. They just no. weren't, it just yeah. wasn't. It, it it didn't fit you. Mm-hmm. You know, you had to go out with your sling and your rocks, not mm. with the with the sword and armor of somebody else's. Mm. So powerful. Mm. Mm. So how did that morph then into <laughs> even what you are today to kind of take us on the journey? Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot of dying and just stripping, I think, that initial mm-hmm. season. Per what we're talking about, I think if I'm left to my own devices i mean i can i can i can strategize yeah. and draw a crowd draw a crowd mm-hmm. and and in that context of oak lawn like man i i preached my best sermons <laughs> my best sermons, and no one's <laughs> they didn't care yeah like i mean people are so they were so over the conversation of jesus and most of them were running in that that neighborhood were it's just very post Christian. So and then a lot of the people that you would grow a typical church around didn't didn't want to come to Oklahoma. They didn't want to come there. Yeah. No like way. we can stay in the burbs or and yeah. and we weren't offering much. We were just offering prayer. So <laughs> it, it And and that was and that was not messy very impressive. And yeah. It just so it really <laughs> became as much as I've seen Oaklawn as a was a you know, church planting graveyard, it's a church planters graveyard. Mm. And mm. I think a lot of my my dreams desires giftings preferences uh history and experiences god buried all that mm. and he put me in a corner and stripped me and said am i enough and, and you know the phrase that he that he mentioned was was that, that i shared in our chapel today at Steve and i was you know i first called you down here to minister to me to me would you minister to me would you would you would you to meet learn Jesus, how yeah, yeah. would you yeah. learn how to love me and and those that gather would would you collectively corporately learn to host me? Would you learn to respond to me? What if I'm the only one that shows up? And like that language, okay, cool, you know, the, yeah. it made sense. Like, okay, that's a good idea, but practically, when because um, spiritual parents of ours moved down, they had had a prayer kind of hours in their their house, and they asked if we would adopt those hours, and I was like, sure. But it was 6 a.m. was one of the hours, four <laughs> days a week, and then 6 p.m., four days a week. And so she was a real intercessor, and she just said, I think you're to go into this you know, school of prayer. And so I, I learned mm. how to pray. I learned how to, how to host the Lord, how to respond to the Lord. It wasn't just like two hours a week, like 30 minutes, and, oh, God came during worship. It was like really learning how to create an environment that first attracted God. Mm. So you didn't go on the journey to attract lost and broken people. I'm going to attract God. I, 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 I think the Lord reframed. That. I mean, yeah. we, we were, we were loving lost people down yep. there, but it wasn't building a church. It wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, people were being ministered to, to some extent, but it, we didn't have a core to build around. Like, Again, I think the Lord was cementing something inside of us initially mm. um, that that this is going to be built for him, by him, through him, <laughs> unto because him, of him, unto, unto him. him. Mm. Like he was so jealous for that initial four to five years. Mm. And um, it, it was affliction. You know, Psalms 132, remember David and all his afflictions to create that resting place and what defined the early days for us is what we said no to yeah. in order to protect what we singularly said yes to and that this is going to be a place for And that's us. difficult for gifted people. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, 
people who've been there done that. Yeah, with, try explaining to your families what in the heck you're doing. Yeah. With no, you know, yeah. no budget, no. It's not an established church work like no. they're used to seeing. We didn't have right. a website for, I mean, we had, we had, eventually we, we would grow, but when we had five, 600 people, we still didn't have a website. We didn't, we didn't have. You didn't really have a building. We Did had, you? we had, we ended up, well, the fire marshal showed up, the original upper room <laughs> shut that down. And so we, we bounced to the Anglicans next door and we still had our prayer <laughs> hours going on Monday gotcha. through Saturday. So that upper room was that place of prayer hours. And then we would have a, a sizable gathering on Sunday nights. But at the, at the Anglican, at the church. Anglican church. So mm-hmm. then everyone's asking you, are you Anglican? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I no. think, I think God was just really reframing what is success and I think that that was the biggest death. Wow. It's like, man, what is, so if we, if we love on him and we minister to him and we're faithful in that, that's success. And if no one so comes good. or no one joins or, and that is easy to say now yep. when the people do come and they do join, but. And you um, have some resources finding it. Yeah, 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 sure. Like I'm not, we don't hover in the red anymore, thank God, but. Then, whew, that was a true test. Speak to those who thought they wanted what you were chasing after. And then when they realized, wait, this is not what I thought it was going to turn into. And they stepped away from you, but you had established those friendships with them. Did you have any of that? <laughs> those are the deep, the deep is, places. What is this podcast On the called? real? On the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I? <laughs> can, we, can we change the names in the... In the, in the <laughs> Protect the innocent. Uh, yeah, I mean, because that what you just described is so relational. Yeah, not just with Jesus, but with this community of people who would go there with yeah, you. Very perceptive. Maybe. Yeah, and very so then relational. at That's some point true. they go, "Oh wait, I thought I thought we were going to be the next such and such, and you're not taking oh, us there. We yeah. thought you know you would do this, and wow, this is you're, you're holding to this prayer thing, right? <laughs> this mm. yeah. cultivate his presence thing. Like, where's the such and such ministry I thought you were going to birth mm. for me? Mm. That's uh, those are, man, those are just tender places of, I think, you know, yes. <laughs> and I think maybe that's how we share in his sufferings. I don't know. You know, when I look back, I think, did I, you know, what, could, should we have done that differently or did, did you know, the peop- people that have come and gone? But I think. Yeah, to be faithful to that one thing. So when you mentioned suffering, that's the first thing that triggered in me of those that 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 I really bonded with and thought yeah. they were going to go there with us, and then at some point they just couldn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then you start second guessing, Lord, am I even really hearing your voice? Did yeah. I hear, hear hear you right? Yeah. Am I being obedient? Did I yeah. Think you could tell early on, uh, and and I, you know, we we did not I think I mentioned this earlier we did not ask a lot of people to come down mm. and that so was the lord was very serious about, about that. that and very gracious mm. because i think when we do when people are following us based on our invitation yep. then the expectation yeah. is on us mm-hmm. as right. leaders to meet those expectations so mm-hmm. in the early days you you could tell who actually was being called mm. by mm-hmm. god mm. Because there was a grace. Yeah. And, right. And because no one else would be willing to do anything. Well, yeah. Of this. No, right. you wouldn't sustain and stay through mm-hmm. kind of the, the yeah. our process. And yeah. then you end up going through this process with us and you would only stay in it if God called you to do mm-hmm. that. And yeah. I mean, I think about, I think about like one of our, <laughs> one of our guys on staff, when he first came, he one he he just started coming and really encountered the Lord had mm. was living uh, in a homosexual lifestyle and anyway, but he um you know gave his life to Jesus returned to the Lord and then the first time he ever did anything with us he worked for free for I don't know how long yeah he just said I feel called to do this and since then that guy has played every role in our staff <laughs> I can think of. He said the other day, every staff, but every place for the women's faster. Um, it's true. But he, you know, I, I say that to say that it was obvious that the Lord had called him because mm. of that heart that said, mm. I'm going to do anything. Yeah. Talk about staying true to the vision and the difficulties in that sometimes. 
it it's just a constant re ante. I think mm. the to know what we have said yes to and Psalms one thirty two is a great reference point for it. Um just that, that whole idea of David making vow to the Lord to create a place that would be marked by the presence or a resting place for the Lord. So that 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 yes, it seems like in in <laughs> in ever so often there's seasons of just re anting to yeah. it. Which which is defined by what we say no to as much as it is what we say yes to. Wow. So protecting I think I think as as we've grown things can get more complicated mm. as people are complicated organization gets complicated and so for me keeping the simplistic pursuit of the presence of the Lord and calling our core team to that regularly mm. um it just seems like something we're constantly yeah, we're revisiting and we're we don't right now. I don't have many messages so <laughs> um, I don't, I don't have like a ton of, of, we don't do a lot of series. We mm. don't, we, we, you know, we'll address things as the Lord shows us, but sure. my, I'm not a big five year vision plan. Yeah. Three Which year you were vision before. Plan. Yeah. That's the point. God <laughs> reworked you. Yeah. And I, I'm a daily bread guy. I'm yeah. a, I'm a, I am first. I'm not a leader first. I'm a follower. Please speak to that some more. Dig down on that. <laughs> Jesus, who is my leader. And so I I really I think we can we can outlead the Lord, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Like like our visions and plans and strategies, we we we've adopted a wisdom of this age to impact people. Mm. And I think we've left the Lord out of that equation wow. in some ways. Wow. Not not that's not yeah, and that's I don't want to generalize and say that for sure. everybody that's doing a five year plan. That's I mean, it's certainly good to have a plan without a plan people perish but um i i do believe that that even jesus right now jesus is seated at the right hand of the father he's going to return right but he's still living according to john 5 i can do nothing i don't see my father doing say anything i don't hear my father saying he he doesn't know when he's returning that's right he doesn't, there's not a graph in heaven that says, here's when you're coming back. Right. He, I mean, he may know signs and times, but he's waiting for his father yep. to tell him, go. Mm. He's, he's living in relation with it, go. And I think as a leader, I, I'm learning how willing he is to lead me mm. when, when I allow him, when I'm, when I'm, when I allow him. Speak to the liberation of that too, because. You, you speak say, to it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm thinking all the leaders I'm dealing with that are just so stressed out mm. because they, um, because they're in a position where they're trying to lead it all, mm-hmm. and they are just burnt, mm-hmm. trying to be everything for everybody. You know, I think, um, I know even leading our church, I, there are these moments. I think you're speaking right to me about this. Like I'm ahead of the Lord mm-hmm. because I feel this pressure to get out ahead of things. Mm. So that I can, because there's a whole team waiting. Yeah. I mean, they have jobs that are waiting for me to tell them what the Lord is saying. Wow. So that they can then be, be engaged in what they're mm. supposed to do. And uh, and so I, I know that we as pastors um, feel that pressure. And I mm. definitely think that such a word, and you know, to be a good follower and uh, and not lead the Lord. Tell me, tell me how that... Um, how does that look practically? I mean, you guys, to your point, you didn't have a media team. You didn't have all these things in the past, but you have that now. Mm-hmm. So how does that look now on the practical level? Like, you know, I'm, we're not doing anything till the Lord says, so y'all just keep shooting the same footage of the same songs. I mean, what, mm-hmm. how, what does that look like? To your question earlier about keeping the main thing, the main thing, I, I think our, our culture now there's there's a there's different departments and yeah. we have you got we have a church of a couple of thousand yeah. different campuses and and yeah. so I mean there's international influence that you're mm-hmm. so that there's you're doing for. a tour this yeah all all that but um, knowing knowing what has created the fruit of that mm. is so vital and I I think my my role as the the father and senior leader is to keep the main thing the main thing yeah. and. And when we when we lose focus of that, um, then I just there's times where I'll just strip us down and say, "Hey, we're like we're mm-hmm. not traveling this year. Mm-hmm. We're not we're not going on the road. We're yeah. 
We're um, turning off the live stream this we've, week. We've turned whatever. off the live stream. Yeah. Yeah, so. I heard you doing that, and I heard about you <laughs> telling everybody we're not traveling this year. We're not, we're not traveling. We're just going to. And we, so I think we're doing, we're, doing, we're doing one, three, one little yeah, tour with, with our Spanish Compared to what you're album. being invited yeah. to. Right, right. right. So I, I think it's knowing the season that you're in, mm-hmm. knowing knowing what the Lord is speaking to you as the leader, not not necessarily like every day is he giving me directives, no, but in seasons he is. Mm-hmm. He's, sure. He's, he's constantly highlighting things that, you know, need to be corrected or addressed. And usually it's unto that, that for us, that one Psalms 132 mandate, mm-hmm. yep. creating that resting place for the Lord. And I love how you presented that in a meeting we were in earlier today. You know, everybody's looking for the secret sauce. Mm-hmm. And you said, it's real simple. David figured it out, create a habitation for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, Mm -hmm. you know, that's it. I mean, what Mm -hmm. else are we doing from that? (laughs) Because you've got story after story of like lost people just walk in. Like, Mm -hmm. what's happening here? I need Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 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 I'll tell you, and to your point, even today you shared something that I got to listen to. And we do believe that this could be the generation that ushers in the return of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we need different type of leaders, mm. and those leaders have to be those who are great followers of mm. Jesus, which means he's leading. Mm. We're not. We're not a, out ahead of him. He's out ahead of us, and we're just mm. we're, we're behind in the train right. of right. his robe. Yeah, I call it the active leadership of Jesus mm. versus Jesus's leaders. Mm. We have a, you know, you're a leader. I'm a leader. There's a gift of leadership that he's sure. endowed that we we utilize. But we are in such need in this hour of the active leadership of Jesus. Mm. Uh, that Rick Joyner book I read from, the only thing the first century church had, in going, for, had going for itself was God. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, they, you know, they were all, they'd rejected mm. Jesus, denied him, d- abandoned him. They were the least qualified yes. to lead the church, and yet mm. God came. And yeah. those that were unqualified became qualified, but it was because God was upon them, appointed them. Yeah. And the only reason they could do what they did was was God. And I, I think we're we're entering into a, an hour where it's just we have to have him. We have to have his active, undeniable leadership. Like, oh, that you would rend the heavens and step down. Which will require a lot. I think what's difficult about being a leader who wants to be a follower of Jesus is it that you're, you have to constantly die in front of people. Speak to that, and that's, that's brutal. The word. It, it is, it, and it feels like dying every time. Yep. And so, if you're leading, and you're, you, and you're, and you're, you know, your staff's looking at you, going, "Well, what do you want us to do?" Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't and I don't. I think that's super uncomfortable. It and is. I think leading, or if you're leading, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're whatever it is, and and you are following him, it means there's a lot of space for you to not know. And I feel like our culture, maybe in Christian culture, we just, I just, I, th- I don't know that we have exalted meekness. And I think the Lord is looking for meek, meekness, mm. looking for poverty of spirit. He's not looking for our strength. So good. I think you said that earlier about, yeah. you know, his strength is perfected in our weakness, but you know, it sounds so nice, but I don't like being weak. Nope. No one does, no. but. Man, I do, that is what, I don't know, for me, that's what... We surely don't that. post our weaknesses out there no, on our socials, do we? No, and even when we do, we somehow make it look cool. I don't know, it's just, <laughs> it's hard. It's a, But the reality of it mm. is, it's brutal, man. It stings every time. <laughs> every time. Yeah. Oh, well, could you, could, <laughs> well, I, I'm right there with you. I'm just trying to think how, if I'm listening to this right now, if those of you guys that are listening... My question to you would be, I'm in. Mm-hmm. How, what's my first couple of steps? Mm. Someone listening, like, I recognize that I've been leading Jesus. He hadn't been leading me. I haven't really given him a habitation space. You built an, an entire community around, let's do that. Mm. You're further along than most anyone else. What's the starting spot? Personally, maybe even corporately. I mean, I think, you know, if, if it is a leader, I think... That will require a measure of repentance. And what I mean by repentance is not like, oh, woe is me, but just, oh, God, you know, Mm. let me renew my mind. Let me let go of the pressure 
that I have engaged in the lie that it was all up to me to build something. So let me start there, you mm. know, let me change my heart. And so now, good. yeah, now how can I, how can I, what is it that I can do where I make space for you? And if you don't show up, Lord, then I look like an idiot. You know, what is it? How, you know, how can we make room where he's, he, we need him to come, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I think that that's part that's of it, powerful. but I think making a resting place for him is, I don't know. We were talking earlier just about yeah. lingering yeah. in yeah. services yeah. Mm-hmm. and for pastors that are listening. And sometimes it, you know, it seems so unproductive. Yeah. That 17 minute worship set. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so, but when, when my guys are, I, I, I don't call it spontaneous singing. Mm. I don't like that term. It seems too whimsical mm. and like spontaneous. Like, Accidental. Yeah. Or like, something. like it's the, a spontaneous date or a spontaneous day. Um, it's too frequent in my world for it to be spontaneous. You would call it response. Wouldn't I you? call it relational, yeah. but it's a relational response. Mm-hmm. And, but, but there's moments where we miss it. We give our guys enough rope and they're, they're, <laughs> they're going for it and they're going to yeah. linger for a whole service. Right. Yeah. I'm going to talk to them after it for sure. But, <laughs> but I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater mm, just good. because, just because people didn't understand it. For me, it's bringing understanding in those moments that, Hey, we actually believe we're, we're engaging a living person. Yeah. And, and Who we're, wants to come. he wants to come and we're making room for him mm-hmm. to come. We're, we're creating a place for him to come because I know that, that when he does breathe on those moments, they're more transformative than the 10 previous fully planned services that right. I did yeah. that hit the mark and we yeah. hit all of our chords mm. and everyone that, no, 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 and it looked good from my perspective, mm. but those moments when oh, he, perfect. he marks them, it is so worth it. And we have, you know, we have, we have, this is all boasting in the Lord, but we, on Sunday nights, we're, it's millennialville. It's, it's a thousand millennials mm. that show up some of them an hour before service and wait in line for a three hour service, which an hour and a half of that is us ministering to the Lord, whether it's lingering mm. and it gets pretty wild, but, and a culture has been established right through this. But I just think there's a generation that's actually really hungry for it. Mm. They want longer services. Mm. They want longer worship sets. They want, they want, they want deeper, God. like they want, they want him. And and I think they don't want to talk about him. They want to experience him. They want to experience him. Yeah, and then they want <laughs> to, they want the, they want depth. They want, mm-hmm. they want, they're not looking for pretty. They're not looking for polish. They're looking for authentic. They're mm-hmm. looking for, for a genuine. Cause I think if you're willing to make it, it, it how did you say it? An idiot of yourself mm-hmm. or <laughs> I think it's genuine though. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a genuine pursuit and you're modeling that like David dancing before the ark. Mm-hmm. I'll become undignified yeah. to me. That is a, Oh, that is wow. that how is foolish what we're is the about. king today right. that he right. embarrassed and, himself. And the point though is that there's another one that's enthroned. That's right. It's like Someone it's like Gideon when good. when yeah. in Judges wow. eight when the people come and they want to anoint Gideon. You know, like we got oil out, we're ready to anoint you. And he mm-hmm. goes, "You save your oil. You have a king and you have a leader." Yeah. And I think in those moments when we humble ourselves yeah. and we wow. we yield yes. and. We're saying, hey, your yes. oil actually isn't about my gifting. Your oil Shh. isn't about my plan. Your oil is unto your leader. And if he if he wants us to be quiet, then yeah. we're going to teach you to reserve that for him. Mm. But I just think we've we've mm. cultural Christianity is consumeristic in nature. Yeah, it is. And we have we've built we've built mechanisms and and to appeal to their consumerism. To appeal to it, yeah, yeah. in order to reach them. And yeah. I think I think there was a season for I that. Too. But but I think I think in order to get to where we're going, I think there's certain things in the church that have to die, not because they failed, but they actually succeeded. Yeah, and I would say, and I think you and I would agree, that he allowed that season. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't think it was mm-hmm. his best plan, but mm-hmm. his presence is the best plan. Right. Yeah. And I, I think it's getting us to where we're we're getting to. And and I, I think that God is is killing certain things right yeah. now. He's killing certain agendas in order to emerge his. And again, I, I want to state this. I don't think it's because those things are wrong. I just think that the season's changing. Well and it said. doesn't it's it well doesn't said. take an it doesn't take a prophet to realize we're the this t- term unprecedented, mm-hmm. but we're on the right now we're on the brink of World War Three. Yep. We've just been through a pandemic. Got 
tensions in our nation. We're divided as ever. And so like, I think God has slayed some things through the pandemic that need to remain dead. Yep. And, and I think we need to realize what is he resurrecting? What is he putting life on? And we need to throw everything we have at that. And I can't answer that for people on, you know, in their context, but what is he on? And, and, wholeheartedly mm. go for that mm. wholeheartedly throw yourself at that mm. and hit that one key and and mm. and let him i mean unless he builds what he's going to build we're moving in vain and we're we're empty that's yep. what it means vain means emptiness wow. yeah. and i just see that we've become pretty hollow and i think god has a lot of houses but few homes and he's looking for places that he can dwell and i i'm a presence guy i think most people on here are and i just think we've got to re ante yeah. on that that initiative it's the one thing one one thing i ask this what i seek to gaze upon the beauty mm-hmm. man i think that that he's he's calling his bride back to him you know you do something that you mentioned earlier and i want you to speak to it you are bringing a core group of leaders they're meeting face to face with you i think you said like once a week and you've been in this 12 16 weeks whatever it was it was like we're going to go through this passage together psalms 132 mm-hmm. It is the vision of your house. It's mm-hmm. the vision of what God told you to do. And we're going to go, I don't know, go back through it. It's probably not proper um, language because it's fresh. But I can't imagine anything else happening, but they're just engaged and going, wow, wow. And once the leaders are running that way with you, mm. everything follows suit. Speak to that a little bit, what you've been doing mm. and how that. I I really feel prompted to yeah. answer this question, but Larissa had a dream Um that she was trying on uh, wedding dresses. And and I think this dream is not just for upper room, but I think it's for the bride mm. as a whole. But share that dream just a little bit because I think it speaks to Psalms 132. Yeah, I had a dream. I was in it. I was getting married. I was um, in a bridal boutique. And I was in the dressing room and the, the attendant was bringing me wedding gowns. And after a few gowns, I was like, why are all of these, they would be like sequin or like a big slit at the leg or too low cut or not, not white, you know, yeah. or I would. And so finally I, I thought maybe he didn't know I'm a bride, you know, maybe yeah. he's confused. So I popped my head out of the little curtain. I said, Hey, I'm a bride. I'm not trying to be sexy. Yeah. I want to be beautiful. And I, I woke what? up and I knew the Lord, you know, that the, that the bride, you know, you, when you get married, you just want, you're thinking about what does my groom find beautiful? Yeah. You know, what cut of what dress, a, what part yeah. of me would he love to see? What, you know, what's appealing to him? What's appealing yeah. to him? What if I'm going to, how does he like my hair? Does he like it down? Does he like yeah, it up? Yeah, what yeah, does yeah. he like it when I wear a lot of makeup or no makeup? And anyway, I, I that's how brides think. And I think. Um, at least, you know, one that's really in love. Um, and so I think the Lord is just, you know, uh, he's reframing, you know, his bride not to be sexy to the world. So good. I think we've tried in the name of, of saving the lost, sure. we've tried to look good to the world. Come in here, you know, and I think what is actually irresistible is true love, true beauty, true yeah. beauty. Mm. That when you know, you know, the moment when a bride walks in the back, you know, she's coming from the back. Everyone loves to look at his face, look at her face, yep. look at his yep. face, because we want to see like, what is he gonna say when he sees her? Is he gonna cry? He's, he's crying. Gonna smile, yeah, he's crying. I knew he yeah, would. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think that this is what God's doing with His bride is that He's like, you don't need. To get dressed for all of them. Yeah, for the crowd. If you and I mm. are in love, they're going to be captivated and jealous. They're going to want what we have. That's it. Which is what Paul said, right? Provoke them to jealousy. Yeah. Because of how good our relationship yes. is with Yes. That's really what he's so, talking about. And that's, the final, that's the final identity of the church is, is a bride. bride. Mm. It's the that's spirit right. and the bride. And it's actually this, I love that phrase, the spirit inside the bride saying come so it's the spirit partnering with the bride Mm -hmm. and i think the holy spirit is the great wedding planner of heaven and in in these these shakings and the darkness of our time i think 
I think there's an emerging bride and it's going to be your greatest hour. There's going to be harvest. It's unto harvest. It's not mm. unto us barricading and, right. you know, right. bunkering Agreed. down. It really will be unto evangelism. It really will be unto the exploits of the kingdom, but it's, it's, it's undeniably him. And yeah. I just, I think we were kind of cornered as a church, especially in North America. And I think our greatest hour is just right around the corner because of the stripping and this, yeah. the singularity that he's putting us in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, you know, I just, I'm just so, you know, triggered in my mind a couple of stories that you've told. I mean, you, you would think that, what you're saying is like, oh, well, that's just for the Christians to get around and fall out in the spirit. Mm. That's it. not at all what Upper Room is experiencing. Mm. You were explaining to me how people off the streets are coming in, people who have been in crazy, wicked lifestyles, mm. throwing their finger up at the church and said, I don't want anything to do with it. Mm. And now 20 years later, engaging, showing up because a friend said, you need to come check this out. Mm. And they're sitting in the back room. And you said, I love that, and I, I, sorry I'm telling your story, but I just it's so impactful to me. Wasn't the preaching, wasn't even the worship. They had encounters with God sitting mm-hmm. in that back row, mm-hmm. like, what have I just walked into? But mm-hmm. this is everything I dreamed God would be. Mm-hmm. My favorite testimony, we're, we're in that, still in an urban uptown context where a lot of young people have moved to. Mm-hmm. But my favorite testimony is parents that come with their kid that now attends upper room. Who their kid being 25 years 25, old. 25, right? yeah, 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 in their 20s. And they ran from the Lord and oh, rediscovered gosh. him in a context like upper room. <laughs> the parents are really weirded out by it. Like it's not, yeah. it's not a, it's not. But it's what they've been praying for. But it's yeah. what they've been praying <laughs> for. Right. And yeah. so, but it's not kids. the way they thought it would come. Exactly. They wanted him sitting on the pew with them. Exactly. Yeah. What? And, and so I, I do, I do think there's a, such a special calling on millennials and Gen Z. Um, I agree. There's, there's a reformation that's happening. We're in the midst of it right now. Uh, and I think they're, they're going to lead very soon in, I agree. in, in new exploits, but it, it, it will look different. And yeah. I think we just need to have ears to hear and eyes to see. It's it's not the message changes at all. Right. No, no, it's no. actually I think a, a, a more purified a double down. Yeah, mm-hmm. but but I think some of the the means to that message might look a little different. Yeah, and, and so, um, but I I I uh, I love I love watching parents go. It's 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 a little long for me, or it's a little <laughs> expressive for me, mm-hmm. or. I don't fully get it, but I see the fruit in yeah. this mm-hmm. this kid who mm-hmm. who once was blind and lost and dead spiritually, you, and now they want to show up to a six a.m. prayer you, meeting. <laughs> like I'm a On little a concerned about him. Yeah, After no, they went out Friday night. There's right? one. There's <laughs> one family I'm thinking of whose whose son travels four days a week to make the six a.m. prayer meeting, mm-hmm. and he's there from six a.m. to noon. And then he works a part time job, and he's the dad's concerned. That he wakes up that early, he's concerned he's dying. I'm like, look, he's coming to prayer. Bro, come on. Is it? And he's like, I thought it was a cult. It's not a cult. It's just a prayer meeting. And I think people are hungry for more than what cultural Christianity is offered. And, yeah. And I think the, the prayer is a means to do that. Amen. But it's been a fun journey. Well, I'm sure we could go another four hours. Hmm. But I, since the landing pad right here, the Lord, would you guys just pray into this? For our listeners, that maybe someone's, you know, listening right now, going, "Wow, I just, I think I've abandoned presence for productivity or for whatever else it may be," mm-hmm. and they're crying out on the inside for presence and a presence-led life, mm-hmm. and um, and you guys so exude that. I mean, every time I'm around you, I'm just like, oh, mm-hmm. I just got more Jesus, mm-hmm. and um, thank you for that. Thank you for mm-hmm. exuding that. Thank you for fighting for that and not giving up on that and going after programs and processes Mm -hmm. but you know yeah but would you pray into that over our listeners Mm -hmm. go ahead babe yeah lord we i just think of you know whoever's listening right now i just want to cry out with you lord we're hungry for you god we are hungry for you we're hungry for you as your people and Lord, we, the places where we're tired, weary, worn out, feel pressure, feel anxious, even as leaders or as, as business owners or as parents or as 
just the pressure. I just pray right now that you would sense a great release of pressure, a, a removing of the heavy yoke and the burden to do something great for God and to look up and say, God, we just want you to come. We want you to have your way. We want the things that we read about, Lord. We want, mm, yes, Lord, Lord, the demonized to be delivered, the dead to be raised, the sick to be healed. We want a great, a, a third great awakening in our country. And so, God, I pray that it would start in our cars and our homes and our in our churches and big churches and small churches and youth groups and college groups and um, Bible schools, Lord, all over the map. And so I just I just bless the hungry heart to cry out to you, God. We bless you and we're hungry for you. And we pray that for an increase of the gift of hunger and we pray for a grace to keep the main thing, the main thing, Lord Jesus. Make us faithful. We love you. Yeah, and I pray, I just lastly pray for courage. Are there any mm -hmm. pastors that are listening yeah. that, yeah, please, Lord. that are, are, are wanting to pivot, mm -hmm. to wanting, Lord, to turn? Um, I pray for great courage for them and that you, Lord, would uh, lay out the steps, that they can take mm -hmm. small steps. Yes, just hear the God. Lord saying, be yes. faithful with a little and watch what I do as you, maybe if you feel like there's a pastor listening that mm -hmm. potentially just like lingering, if that yeah. makes sense, just to linger and wait to communicate something to your community as well as um, I just see little prayer gatherings where mm -hmm. you just, you wait on the presence of the Lord and, 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 and just welcome him and mm -hmm. love on him with a small group. I just feel it takes a few. Yes. It takes a few. Yes. And so I just pray courage and wisdom yes. and grace uh, yes. for you. We bless you guys. Yes. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. So powerful. Well, thank you, Michael <laughs> and Larissa Miller of thank the you. Upper Room, the movement that God is expanding all across the nations of the earth. Well, you heard it here first on On the Real. Thank you for joining in.